The heart of every processor is the ALU. Today, we'll design an ALU from scratch using a unique approach that you won't want to miss. Hello everyone, my name is Mike and you're watching Polymath Unlimited. In this series, we are building a Logisim simulation of an 8-bit CPU with the following design goals in mind. First, the CPU should be simple enough to make a physical build practical. Second, the CPU should be capable of complex operations. And third, the CPU should be easy to program. In the last episode, we learned how to use carry lookahead units to make fast adders, which will make our CPU run much faster when we build it for real later. In this video, we will begin designing our CPU's arithmetic logic unit. This will give our CPU all of the tools it needs to perform all the mathematical and logical operations we want it to. An arithmetic logic unit, or ALU, is a circuit that takes two or more operands as input, performs some math or logic on those two operands, and outputs the result of that operation. Usually we also want to output some additional flags, such as whether the result was zero or whether a carry out signal was generated. We'll see in future videos that these flags will be useful when we want to implement conditional branching. We will also provide an additional opcode input to the ALU, which will let us tell the ALU which operation we want it to perform. The question then is, which operations do we want our ALU to be able to do? We'll start by defining how many operations we want, for convenience, we'll limit ourselves to 16 different operations. This will make it so we can encode all of our operations using a 4-bit opcode, which will make wiring easier when we build this circuit later. Now we just need to decide which 16 operations we want. Addition and subtraction are two obvious choices for potential operations. We already know how to make circuits that add and subtract numbers. Feel free to check some of my other videos out if you want to learn how that works in more depth. We will also add an add with carry and subtract with borrow operation to the list. These operations are the same as normal add and subtract operations, but with one important difference. If the last operation the ALU performed generated a carry signal, then we will add one to the result of the operation. This will make multiple precision arithmetic much easier to implement allowing us to do operations on numbers larger than 8 bits by separating them into 8-bit chunks and doing the operations one byte at a time. We will also add a 1's complement and 2's complement operation. The 1's complement will simply flip all of the B bits and output that, while the 2's complement operation will output negative B by flipping all of the B bits and adding 1. We'll add three bitwise operations to the list, and or an exclusive or, these operations simply take each bit of A and perform the AND, OR, and exclusive OR operations on the corresponding bits of B. Now we have 9 of 16 operations defined, so we have 7 more we can use. We will fill the 7 remaining operations with various bit shifts. These will take the B bits and left or right shift them by one place. The difference between the types of bit shifts is in what value they shift into the B bits. Logical shifts will simply shift in a zero, while the right arithmetic shift will preserve the sign by shifting in the leftmost bit. Rotates will shift in the bit that was on the opposite end, and rotate through carry will shift in the carry value generated by the last operation. Now that we have defined all the operations we want our ALU to be able to do, we just need to figure out how to get the ALU to perform those operations. It turns out that this is fairly straightforward to do. Let's take a look at an XOR gate. We can make an XOR gate using two NOR gates and an AND gate. Something very interesting happens though when we add a third input to each of the first two gates. By changing the values of these third inputs, we can make our XOR gate behave as though it were an OR gate or an AND gate. This polymorphic behavior is how my Chameleon CPU got its name. In the ALU, my CPU uses eight of these chameleon gates, one for each bit, to do any operation we want. As far as I know, this approach to ALU design is unique to my particular CPU. I'm not aware of any other CPUs that do this. If you know of one, feel free to let me know about it in the comments. 
I'd be very interested to hear about it. Now that we have something that we can use to perform operations on two bits, let's build a one-bit version of our ALU. We will expand this to eight bits in a moment. We'll start with our chameleon gate and connect it to two inputs, A and B. In order to perform addition and subtraction, we'll connect the output to another XOR gate and add a carry input. Now we can take the output of our chameleon gate and use it as a propagate signal, and the output of our AND gate we'll use for a generate signal that will feed into our carry lookahead unit later. We will route our B input through an XOR gate so we can do subtraction. It is also advantageous to be able to enable or disable the A input, since some operations like bit shifts do not use the A input. We can do this with an AND gate. We'll also invert the outputs of these first two gates, which will save us on transistors when we build this circuit later. We can do this because inverting both of the inputs of an XOR gate does not affect its output. However, we will now need to have our generate signal come from the output of the chameleon's NOR gate to preserve the logic of the circuit. We now have one bit slice of our ALU. To perform addition or subtraction or the XOR function, we simply put the chameleon gate into the XOR configuration. To perform bitwise AND, we place it into the OR configuration. Remember, since we inverted the inputs, our OR gate will actually be outputting a NAND. We also need to give a carry signal so that we can invert the NAND into an AND. To do an OR, we just place the gate into the NAND configuration. To expand this to 8 bits, we'll simply place 8 of these circuits in parallel and we'll use two 4-bit carry lookahead units to handle the carry signals. Remember that to perform the AND function, we needed to have each slice of the ALU receive a carry signal. So we'll put another input on our circuit and route it to all of the carry lookahead units or gates. Now, when we turn this input on, all of our carry signals will be forced to 1. This will also help us with the XOR operation, since when we are doing the XOR function, we do not want to propagate carries. We will also need to invert the B inputs when doing the XOR operation, because otherwise we would be doing XNOR since the carry signals are inverting each output. Also notice that for OR operations, we don't get any generate signals, so we can just leave the carry signals alone. Now we have most of the functionality of our ALU complete. However, there are still a few things missing. We still need to implement bit shifting. And we still need to add some decoder logic so that we can select an operation based on a 4-bit opcode. We'll discuss all of that in the next video. In the meantime, feel free to play around in Logisim and see what you can create. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.